in Onshape, you can create whole features. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am in a part studio. There are 10 parts in here. First, before I create holes, I need points. And to have points, I need to create sketches. Let's click on the sketch tool. And then I'm going to select a sketch plane. And then we have this icon in the toolbar for creating points. And you can see the tooltip. Select the point tool and then click to place points. And I'm going to start off by making them concentric to some of the cylindrical surfaces. Let's move the mouse about over here and it grabs to concentric. So this first sketch will have two of them. Let me hit the check mark and you can see the little dots indicating the points. Next up, let me select this part and I will use the icon in the parts list to hide that component. I can see another surface where I need a bunch of holes. Let me then use the sketch tool to sketch on a surface. And once again, let's use the point tool and grab to the concentric of a bunch of cylindrical surfaces. Easy peasy. There we go. Hit the check mark once more. Let's bring back the component that was hidden. And this part needs some points as well. So for this surface, we will create another sketch. And once again, point tool. There we go. Got my different points in here. Let's hit the check mark. All right, first surface or first hole features that I am going to create. Let's select on the command for holes, which is right here. And then I'm going to select one point. And then let's rotate the model and I'm going to select the other point over here. And that way we are creating two holes at the same time. You can see that I'm already getting a preview of the holes that are being created. And let's change some of the different options that we have in here. First off, let's take a look at how this form works. Here we have the name of the feature. You could rename it from here if you want. Then we have a drop down list where you could choose what type of hole that you want to make. This can be simple or counter bore or counter sink. For this first one, let's choose counter bore. And then we have the standard that you want to use. You can use an ANSI standard, and you can see from the drop down list we have our different ANSI size of holes. And you can choose DIN from in here, or let's change our standard. Now let's take a look at custom real quick. Custom, hey, you can fill in whatever numbers that you want. Let's go back to the ISO standard. Then we have our hole type. And based on the references that I selected, it automatically chose clearance and tapped. Normally you have three choices from this drop down list. You have clearance, you have tapped, and you have drilled. If you take a look at the merge scope, it automatically figured out that, hey, I'm going to start on this component, then I'm going to go into two other different components. So in the first component, it's going to have a clearance hole. And the clearance hole will have a slightly bigger diameter and that'll prevent jacking or prevent separation between the components as the fastener is put in. Besides having clearance and tap, you also have the choice for doing a drilled hole. And I'll show this one later. And with a drilled hole, you're going to choose the drill size that you want to use. But let's go back to clearance and tap. Then we have the size over here. You can choose from the drop down list what size that you want to use from the list of standard sizes. Let's choose M4. And then you can see in red that we have a pitch value that needs to be filled in. And so you can choose 0.5 millimeters or 0.7 millimeters. Choose the one that you want. After we specify the pitch, then we're going to specify the fit. And you can choose a closed fit, a normal fit, or a loose fit. Choose the one that you want. And then you have the percent of diametrical engagement. So we have a number of different fields that we can fill in for 
specifying the whole. You'll notice that you will not have all of these depending on the whole type that you chose. We have size, pitch, fit, and diametrical engagement because this is creating both clearance and tapped holes. If you had just a clearance hole, then you would only have size and fit from underneath here. So again, what you have to fill in depends on the kind of hole that you are creating. Then we have the other different dimensions that we can configure. And if you hover your mouse over the field, you can see what this value pertains to if you can't figure it out from the little image off to the left. So we have our diameter, and then here we have our counterbore diameter. Here's our counterbore depth. And this one is automatically chosen since I'm using an M4 size hole. It's choosing a four millimeter bore depth corresponding to the standard height of an M4 fastener. And then we have over here the tap drill diameter and we have the depth and then we have our tapped depth and our tap clearance. Oh, speaking of which, let me go to the depth drop down list. So you have three different choices for your termination conditions. You can create a through hole, which will go through all material for the components listed in the merge scope. You could choose a blind depth where you're going to choose a numerical value. But here, since we're going to go through multiple components, I am using blind in last. That means it will go through all the components that the hole intersects until it gets to the last component. And the last component is going to have a blind hole that corresponds to this particular hole depth. All right, taking a look at the other information in here, we have the list of the references for where this hole is going to be placed, and we have the merge scope. One other thing that I want to show you, I'm going to remove the components from the merge scope, and then let's hide some of these parts. Let's hide this one, let's hide this one over here. And I just wanna show you that removing all the components from the merge scope is one way of seeing a preview of the hole that will be created. So there you can see how we have our counter bore and the component, the hole being created. And that looks good. Let's then bring back these other components. And then for the merge scope, let's select the three parts that the holes should go through. This looks good. Let's hit the check mark. Now we have the first holes created in the part and the sketch containing the points was automatically hidden. Now for creating the next set of holes, let me select, let's see this part over here and hide it so that we can see the points where I want to locate the holes. Let's create on the hole tool. I am gonna pick these points over here all five of them and for those particular ones hold on let me let me hit the check mark out of here and just make sure that just want to hide the sketch okay let's go back to the whole feature choose the edit button and it's using the same configuration as the previous hole that i just created let's change some of these things for these sort of like internal holes. I do not want to have counter bores on them. Let's choose simple. Let's change this to a blind depth. And for the size of the hole, uh, let's make these a little bit bigger. I'll go to the drop down list. Still using the ISO, let's use the M5. And this here is set for a clearance hole, just like the other one was set to uh, clearance for the first component. Now I will go to the drop down list and say, hey, rather than having clearance where I have the size and the fit that I can specify for this particular component, it's more appropriate to have some tapped holes. And you'll notice now instead of having the size and the clearance, we have the size, the pitch, and the percent of diametrical engagement. Then we have our fields where you could customize the values for the diameter and for the depth. And I can say, let's change this to 12. 
and here we have the tapped depth is automatically configured based on the value of the depth automatically went to 80 percent of that and the last field that we have over here is the tap clearance which is the number of thread pitch lengths for the clearance down at the bottom and so for the merge scope uh, you know what I don't want it going through the flywheel let's remove that component I just want it going through this one part so everything is good for this set of holes let's hit the check mark to complete that one and let's bring back that one component that we hid let me make this sketch visible so I can see the points hey let's create our last set of holes I'll hit the hole tool and once again I will use the left mouse button to click the various references to locate them the points that I want to use and so for this one instead of doing a simple one let's take a look at how a countersink will look and you can see that oh that one's a little bit on the big size and let's see rather than doing a tapped hole let's create this as a drilled hole and then we have to specify the drill size that we want to use you can see the various values that we have let me use a value of 4.2 and there we can see that we have the diameter specified here we have the countersink diameter again you can configure that value if you want to maybe I don't want the countersink to be so big here we have 90 degrees for the angle and then we have the depth of the hole well for this one I don't want to have a blind depth let's change this to a through hole and you'll notice that the value for the depth was automatically removed because this is a through hole beware if you are doing holes you also have the ability to flip the direction that the holes are being created also when I change this to a through hole we have another option here that is automatically checked to start from the sketch plane if you uncheck this option to start from the sketch plane then it can automatically start from the next available surface but that's not what I want and here underneath the merge scope we have way too many components that were automatically selected let me remove the different parts from the merge scope so it only has the one part that I want to have affected and now that this hole is configured we can hit the check mark and in that way we are able to create all the different holes that we want in our parts in our part studio I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.